What is up guys? Welcome back to NS Swift Tips. In this episode, we'll talk about one obscure keyword in Swift. It's about inlining functions. And for those of you who don't know what function inlining is, it's basically a optimization technique that compilers use when they have to compile for speed. It consists of uh, having the inline functions code put in places where the function was originally called. So the original function does not exist on its own anymore, but its body is part of the body of the other functions that you used to call it. By doing these optimizations, usually your binary will grow like binary size will grow because you're calling, you have a copies of this function, the inline function multiple times. So not only just once. When it comes to Xcode, the compiler makes these optimizations decisions on its own by default. But in this video, we will use the at inline keyword to hint the compiler that we want a specific behavior from him. So by doing this, we could gain some benefits. Uh, it's not about just called uh, compiling optimizations, as it turned out. You can use inlining in very interesting ways. So, for example, imagine that you have an app in which some features are unlocked for users who have just paid some purchase or something. So, you have sort of premium features in your app. What if the whole logic was controlled by a bool value from returned from a function? Let's say we name the function is premium enabled. And based on it, either all functions are premium functions are uh, available or they're locked. That is the case for an attacker, then it would be uh, relatively easy to look at our disassembly and find out and guess yeah guess how important this function would have to be uh, due to its name but let's say if we go the other way around and we use inlining if we inline this function basically uh, this would no longer be possible so he would have a really hard time guessing uh, what controls the premium features and also it will be even harder for him to order the uh, implementations of this function so whether it should unlock them or lock them like the premium features so yeah if you're interested in knowing how you can protect your sensitive parts of your code with inlining Keep watching and I'll show you all in Xcode. All right, guys. So here we are in Xcode. I have uh, opened one simple project. It's a command line tool for Mac. And uh, it's uh, pretty simple. It has just one main function that is executing the program. It has three print statements in total. Pretty simple. The idea is just to show you how this uh, function inlining can make a big difference in the difficulty of cracking your app and your code. So, when the program starts, it will just print out this. In fact, let me run it and see what will happen currently. Uh, we are returning for a state false so it should just print it should just print basic version yeah and it exits cool so this parameter that we would like to uh, have a look at the inline hint to the compiler I want to put it in this function here and I'll explain to you why and what's the difference. Let's first start with this inline. Never. But before building it and doing anything else with it, 
make sure that if you are following the same thing you have your target here set for build to be like on the release configuration because if you're making debug builds uh, they're uh, not taking into account all the compiler hints and there are no optimizations in the code there so keep that in mind why I have written this thing here and I wanted to inline it but I'm saying never it's because if I leave the function like that the compiler will make its own decisions whether it wants to inline a function or not and I want to force it to be always because it will be easier for me to show you guys what's the difference so let's first say that we don't want to inline this function build it and run it it runs as, as usual but let's go here in the terminal and use the tool provided by Apple for examining Mac O files. It's O tool, maybe you have heard of it before. It basically can uh, extract information from a compiled binary, Mac O binary, and we are interested in reading out the text uh, section of this binary where all the functions are and we want to print it verbosely so this means it will try to come up with the assembly code instead of the raw uh, binary data so let's let's do this to our file o2 uh, t for the text area v for verbals and just drag this uh, file here and let's pipe the output to the desktop and one folder that that I have this assembly yeah it's this thing and let's put it into a file this assembly no inline dot asm Cool, so it's ready. Let's have a look at this file, which is here. So I'll drag it in Sublime and have a look at what's happening now. So the file is separated. It, it contains like only assembly instructions. That's the text segment from our executable. See this map here? It's only this and every function from our code is written after like function after function that's the whole content of this file and every beginning of a function has this label and if we search for our label of our function our function was check for premium license see what will happen let's say if we take this check for premium license that's our function and that's its full name with the name mangling by the done by compiler but it has this bit and so if, if an attacker was to like wanted to crack our app imagine we had this uh, setup there with a similar uh, checking for premium um, features he could really easily understand that the whole logic depends on the value returned by this function this bow function and he could really easy uh, easily alter it and then he won't walk her up but if we go in our code and switch the inlining to always and build this project again and go to O2 and create a new disassembly out of this file 
and go to our folder pick it and open it here remember for this one that doesn't have the inline we can clearly find the function here it is there is a label for it but in the other file if we try to search for the same thing it, it simply does not exist and what happened there is this function was grabbed like that imagine and put on the place where it's invoked in a, a really similar way as to what I'm doing here and by doing this you're making it really hard for an attacker to crack your premium checks because now this function will exist uh, on mode its body will exist only as a part of bodies from another functions in the places where it is called and you don't have one uh, unified way way of altering it if you want to alter its behavior you have to find it in all the functions where where it's called and then do like alterings there and that's really hard that's that's the cool thing about it also don't uh, get afraid of these assembly things usually if you submit your app to let's say to the app store and someone has a jailbroken iphone and goes and takes your binary from the app package it's the same it's a mac o, mac o executable file if it if he takes it this binary is uh, decrypted so he first have to encrypt it there are ways in which you can encrypt binaries on jailbroken iphones however that's additional complication so it makes it even harder but once you have a function in line you pretty much have no way of referring to it like that and so what will happen is if someone wants to alter its implementation it will be really hard another thing about inlining functions is that not all functions could be in line there are some other cases uh, due to some internal behaviors of the compiler in which a function could not be inlined and so in, instead of failing to compile this will just make the function not inlined and it will be uh, like a proper function like that I mean it won't be inlined uh, so it this will not gonna guarantee you that this function does not exist in your binary you could have a look and check for yourself to be sure and also when it comes to making it harder uh, for uh, attackers you could also in addition to uh, adding this parameter in line you could alter the name to something that doesn't have any sense there are even frameworks for this for code obfuscation in swift maybe in our next video we'll have a look at those if you're interested and uh, another thing that we have to mention about inlining functions and compiler optimizations is that generally speaking there are two kinds of optimizations so aiming for speed and aiming for a smaller size so when a compiler is set to optimize the code so that the binary is smaller when it comes to inlining functions it won't do it because when you have the binary like that if you were to inline it that means you have multiple copies of this this function everywhere in every place that is called this will make the binary bigger because you have a lot of duplication if you were to optimize for speed 
you would do uh, this because every function call is expensive and so if you want to optimize for speed the compiler will do exactly this it will inline the function making it easier to execute the whole thing without the need to switch in context in the CPU registers so that's what I wanted to show you here it's a cool thing to know uh, it's like internal thing I don't even know why Apple are uh, giving you the possibility to use it but it's still here maybe they'll get rid of it but for now you have a way to inline functions in Swift use it there's no guarantee uh, that it will inline it as I've said ag again but yeah that's all from Xcode so that is all from me guys for this week if you want to know more about function inlining in Swift you should check out this article here. I'll put a link in the description below to it. Uh, and if you're interested in Swift development in general, and you're new here to this channel, uh, you may consider subscribing because I'll be posting for you guys uh, videos like this uh, that cover a bit unusual topics about programming. So if you want to be on top of your game, you should subscribe. Have a nice day, everyone. Bye-bye.